Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint some cherries in acrylic and I'm using the Open Acrylics by Golden. This is the first time I've actually ever used them when I'm filming this video here, even though I posted some other things on my channel already. This is actually the first time that I use them. And this is the modern set of Open Acrylics. So it includes a magenta, a pyrrole red, a um, bright yellow, a phthalo green, a phthalo blue, and a titanium white. So I think that's the six colors that are in that set. Very, very vibrant colors. So I didn't really think about that too much when I was choosing this color, this uh, painting with a lot of earth tones, but it's able to mix. You can mix down to those earth tones. I am using a uh, watercolor pencil to do my sketching here and to get this bowl sketched on my paper. And I also sketched a cherry off to the side, which I ended up not painting later. I ended up just painting over it, but, um, but that's not what I thought I was going to do originally anyway. Now I'm just using a little bit of water on my brush to kind of um, fix any edges so that I have a nice uh, symmetrical bowl. And I'm putting my paint out on this little plastic palette. Um, you can use whatever kind of palette you want. It doesn't really matter, but I had this handy and I thought I would just go ahead and use it. And that way I'd get a way to uh, kind of put out all those colors and um, see how they mixed. So first thing I'm gonna do is try to make kind of a dark shadow color. And I started with my phthalo blue and my py pyrrole red and some yellow and you can see I got a nice brown that way and I'm adding in some white to give it kind of like a little bit of a raw sienna type look and um, these colors the since they're so bright it's actually kind of hard to make the neutrals with them but um, I did realize in the another painting that I tried that you can mix your traditional acrylics with these paints you just it just makes them dry a little bit quicker so you just take away some of the long dry time that you typically get with the open acrylics so this is a brown wooden bowl it's kind of on a gray wooden table and uh, that's what I am painting in now and I really like the white in the golden open acrylics in fact I think I'll probably get like a five ounce tube of the titanium white because I could see just using that a lot with my traditional acrylics just to give it a little bit more open blending time now the size tubes that come in this um, kind of sampler set I think I paid around I think typically they're like thirty dollars for the sampler set but I had a a 60% off coupon at AC Moore when I bought mine. So I paid about $16 for my set of six. These tubes are 22 milliliters, which is about a third of the size of the two ounce tubes that are standard. Um, so, and the two ounce tubes start at like, I think around $7 if you're buying them from one of the big box stores online. Uh, just to give you kind of a base of reference as to how much they cost, of course, they're a little bit more, more affordable per ounce if you're getting a larger tube or jar, depending if you're gonna use that much paint or not. I think what I will do is get a few of my often used colors like ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, or burnt umber, one of the two, uh, yellow ochre. And I think I'll get those in like uh, two ounce tubes and I think I'll get the white in a five ounce tube just because I personally prefer tubes over jars as far as getting my um, my paints. But if you prefer jars, you know, they have jars too. Uh, it just depends on what you want. And if you wanted a large quantity, you'd have to go with a jar. Now what I'm doing here is putting in some of the wood grain from the table and I'm only doing that in like the foreground, kind of around where the foreground and where the cherries are so kind of four and mid ground basically because if you put everything in focus like further away it's going to make your picture look flat so I'm just kind of blending it out as it's further away and just keeping the um, the part in focus where it would be closer to the viewer so there's just a little trick for getting good depth in your painting now I find that I can do a lot of oil painting techniques with this like using a fan brush to blend I can keep going back in and messing around and blending stuff out the only issue I had um, with going back in and blending anything was if my brush had a lot of water on it, then it would just lift up back to the bare canvas. So you want to really be careful and make sure your water cup is near your palette so you don't accidentally drip water on top of your painting because that will lift the paint up from the canvas, especially if it sits there for a minute, then you blot it, it's going to lift that right up. So you just want to be aware of that. Now here I'm trying to put some of the wood grain on the bowl. I don't quite have the wood grain color right it's a little bit too cool so getting a little more red and yellow in there to warm that wood grain color up and i'm just um just trying to get a little bit of a pattern in there now i'm just playing with these paints i'm just getting a feel for them because i've never used the open acrylics before and i don't paint with acrylics very often anyway so um I mean, I use acrylics a lot for different projects, but to actually do a painting, I don't paint with acrylics very much. So, you know, I'm getting kind of, um, getting my bearings anyway with this. So you'll probably see I kind of 
do stuff over and over again that I should have been able to just do once, but that's just, you know, part of the, part for the course. It took me about an hour to paint this and it's 11 by 14 size, just to give you a base of reference. So what I'm doing here is putting the cherries in and I'm going with a dark color. I've got the uh, magenta, I got the pyrrole red and a little bit of, um, I think I put a little bit of phthalo green actually to um, really give it a nice dark. I find that phthalo green, if I mix that with one of the reds, it gives it, it almost wants to make it go purple because it's such a cool green. So I didn't get a mud issue. You. Generally, I shy away from mixing green and red together for shadows on red, red objects because it can make things look, especially like flowers or fruit, look kind of spoiled. But I don't find that with a th with this phthalo green because it's just so cool. It's so blue uh, as it is. And now I'm getting the body of the cherries in there with the pyrrole red. And they're kind of looking like, I keep thinking, man, they're kind of looking like apples. So it's kind of... Um, it is kind of bugging me at this point, but um, I'm not worrying about it. Now I'm using the back of my brush to just put the stems in because I knew if I had those long stems in, it's immediately going to make them look more like cherries and less like apples. And now I'm just kind of playing with the highlights. So I've got some titanium white and I'm getting the shine on the cherries. It's not exactly working out the way I want it to, but... Um, I'm persevering anyhow, because, you know, don't give yourself a break. You know, if you're learning something new, if you're trying a new medium, you know, don't let that inner critic out. You just got to play and see what happens. Um, the minute you start judging yourself, then you're just going to freeze up and nothing good is going to happen. You're not going to have good feelings about it. You're not going to get into the zone. You just need to play with your supplies and leave the judge out of it. It's just a canvas. Worst comes to worst, you get scrape off the paint and start again. So just keep that in mind if you're finding yourself being very critical. Now to make a kind of a Naples yellow color, I'm using the yellow, the white, and a little bit of the uh, muddy brown that I made earlier. And that gives me a nice yellow ochre Naples yellow color. And I'm using that for the highlights. And basically what I'm doing is I'm backing off of the cherries for a minute because I was like, oh no, now um, everything is like a greasy mess because it really does stay wet long. It's like painting with oils in that respect. So I'm like, I need to let that just set up for a minute before I attempt to blend or just they're just going to be all pink. So um, I worked on the bowl a bit and then I came back and just softened the highlights on the cherries because what I wanted to do here was give the cherries some volume I wasn't quite ready for the bright highlights yet highlights are so fun um, and but the cherries were just so dark before it's like I need to do something to lighten them up but then I was kind of making them pink and it was uh, it was not going well so when that happens I just I just work on something else sometimes I step away from the painting altogether sometimes I just work on a different part of the painting so um, keep that in mind. Now I'm taking another run at the, sh the highlights here. Um, I don't plan on spending a lot of time on this painting. It's an experiment. Like I mentioned, it's the first time I tried these paints. I'm not expecting a masterpiece here. So I'm just kind of uh, putting down some thick highlights and kind of um, softening them because I'm still used to having, when I usually use acrylics, I use it pretty thick because I need that that blending time, that open time, but I really don't need to with this. So I could have gone much thinner with my layers of paint and still had plenty of time to blend, but I didn't realize that being the first time I used these paints. So um, keep that in mind if you're trying these open acrylics and just, you know, experiment and don't be so hard on yourself. So now I'm going in and adding some highlights. Um, you can see that most of the stems that I put in there kind of got smushed away as I was putting highlights and blending them and whatnot, but that's all right. Sometimes you just need to scrape them in, get your bearings. Even if you paint over them, the fact that you kind of know where you're going, you've got that guidepost that when you come back to painting them in, you'll have, you'll, you'll have that kind of muscle memory. You'll remember why you have them there. Now I did put some of those kind of yellow ochre colored, the mix that we made that was kind of Naples yellowy. I did put some of that on the cherries because they would be reflecting some of that color and it will make them look a little bit warmer and a little bit um, of the scene instead of apart from the scene. And now I'm going to work on the stems. I just mixed up some olivey green color. I used the phthalo green, some yellow, put some pyrrole red in there. Um, and now I'm just kind of painting some nice uh, curvy stems just to give it a different shape and add a little interest to the picture. And this was so much fun, really. I mean, it, it's always fun to experiment with something new. It's always fun to try a new supply and it's especially gratifying when you're um when you're trying something that you've been looking forward to that you've been holding on for a while when you finally get get that paint out of the tube you kind of feel like whoo okay that justifies that purchase um so i'm glad i didn't wait any longer to try these i know i would had them like on my table for like five months it seems like probably not that long but it just seems like forever uh so it was nice to to break them out and uh and play with them so i'm impressed i think by the time this video comes out i will already have filmed my review because i did like three paintings with them to kind of get my feel get my bearings 
Um, but I'm, I'm really impressed with these and um, I'll be using them with my old acrylics for a while, but I do plan on picking up some extra tubes. I do think that the, the sampler sets are the way to go, especially if you can find a good price on them, if you can find them for around 20 bucks, or if you can use a coupon at one of the big box craft stores, I definitely would recommend going that way because you can definitely mix and get a, um, get a good feel for it with a sampler set and decide whether it's for you or not. Um, because it does add up once you're buying those individual tubes at like seven plus dollars a piece, you know, it's going to add up. And if you have to buy it at like the craft store, um, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So I, uh, I recommend doing it that way. I enhanced my shadows and the wood grain, and that's pretty much what I did for this painting. Um, I think think that you really want to make sure that you get your contrast and your shadows well um, established and sometimes you have to let the paint dry and go back in after it's dry because it is going to keep blending in with that white that you had in the background so that's why I had to go back in and kind of fuss with those a little bit. If you have any questions on these paints, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section down below. I will have links to everything in the video description in case you want to find these. Um, and. I think that's just about it. I mean, I'm still painting though. I've never, <laughs> I painted this, I'm actually voicing this over quite a ways after I painted it. So um, I'm kind of like, I'm looking at the screen, like, oh, I'm still painting. Look at that. Still adding more. Could have been done before. Nope. Still adding more. Got to put some more highlights on there. Got to gild the lily. I love highlights. They're so fun. They're like the sprinkles on top of cupcakes, aren't they? Um, I probably overdid it with the highlights because I was thinking this was done like uh, a few minutes ago. <laughs> now it's like, nope, nope. Gotta, gotta add a little bit more. Now, of course, put too many highlights in. Now I gotta take some highlights out. See, this is what I was talking about of the back and forth and redoing stuff that I tend to do because I'm not that, um, I'm not that experienced with acrylics and I never used the open ones before, but, um, but it still was fun. It's a lot of fun. And there, signing my name, officially calling it done and over with. Here's a look at the finished painting. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.